Politicians often make grandiose statements and proclamations without any real power to back them up. Which brings us to Ohio Governor John Kasich. On the eve of the game, Kasich has once again issued a proclamation urging Ohioans not to use the letter M. And this year, he took it a step further, asking the Buckeye State to eschew pleated khaki pants that Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh likes to wear. But following OSU's stunning upset loss to Michigan State a week ago, the Buckeyes know what's at stake is more important than fashion choices. If we lose our last two games, um, yeah, of course that would be a failure. <laughs> um, we come to Ohio State and we don't lose here. Both on the defense will be facing a Michigan offense that takes an old school approach, utilizing both the tight end and the fullback. You know, that's that's kind of what we look forward to in our room, especially with some of the guys that we have. You know, some of the teams kind of make you play basketball a little bit and want to spread it out, and these guys are they're going to play some real football. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think going to be good for us, and we'll have a good game plan and uh, prepare the right way for that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's more difficult, but it's just it's, just, it's different preparation. And, uh, you know, like, like you said, we have played against a variety of different offenses this year, and um, it's not necessarily more difficult, but it's just different in the way you prepare for things. And it's going to be a physical week of practice, and you, know, you have to get ready for different types of things for the run and the pass and be able to play both those things well. And So it's just it's all about consistency with us, just being able to go out there every play and make something happen. Ohio State senior center Jacoby Bourne is the fourth family member to play in the game. As his dad Mike played at Michigan, as did older brother Justin before transferring to Ohio State. While Jacoby hopes the next generation of Bournes will someday play in the game, he realizes how special tomorrow will be. It's humbling, you know, to be just, you know, to see, you know, like my dad, Justin, Zach, you know, play in this game. And it's humbling for me to, you know, just kind of be in the same footsteps and know, know that we have, you know, we've had a great opportunity. You know, not many people get to play in this game, but to know that we've had four people, you know, in my family is, um, like I said, it's humbling. It's a great experience, you know, it's, it's the best best rivalry, rivalry game around. So um, just like I said, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. Certainly Jacoby Bourne with an interesting perspective on the game as Mike Miller joins us now to bring his perspective to the game as Ohio State, Michigan for the first time really in, in quite some time since probably 2007, this mm -hmm. game really means something in terms of the Big Ten title race for both teams. It does, Mark, and, and that's that's great. It adds to it. Certainly the rivalry itself goes without saying. I think it should go without, without saying. But one of the uniquenesses about this series, and probably what has elevated it is, uh, for one or both teams over the years, uh, there's been something at stake, either a championship or a very high bowl or anything of the above. And with that back in the mix, maybe for the long term now with Michigan having their coaching problems figured out, it makes uh, this Saturday's game uh, really intriguing. Well, and both fan bases will be intrigued by what happens to Penn State. Michigan State yeah. following this game, one fan base mm -hmm. will be a lot more intrigued depending upon because whoever wins this game, if they get some help from Penn State, will be in the Indianapolis. But that will be a, a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. This Michigan team, they're 9-2. and two. They lost their opener against Utah, lost a game to Michigan State, which they probably should have won. The only time Michigan State led against Michigan was when time expired. Yeah. So this is a Wolverine team that I think maybe it hit its peak earlier in this season. They, they've shown some signs the last couple of weeks. Indiana obviously took them to overtime. Penn State gave them a pretty good battle last week as well, but still a very good Michigan team. Very good Michigan team on both sides of the football. The defense goes without saying, although they were nicked up a little bit at linebacker, I think they're probably back and healthy again. So that'll be a challenge certainly for Ohio State working against the Michigan defense. I think offensively, the Ohio State defense has a chance to shut Michigan down a little bit. Uh, the quarterback, uh, Ruddick, isn't particularly mobile. If somehow the Ohio State defensive line can pressure him a little bit, could force him into mistakes. He has made mistakes, although largely earlier in the year. And the Wolverines haven't run the ball, I don't think, consistently that they're a tremendous threat in that regard. So Buckeyes have real opportunities to uh, do some damage Saturday. Well, and much like last week against Michigan State, there will be quite a few Ohioans playing for Michigan, yeah. including Kenton's Noah Furbush, who's got uh, played in seven games this year, has, I think, five tackles on, on special teams. But quite a few Ohioans on the roster, particularly on the offensive line, and also their tight end, Jake Butts, who's, who's done a really a fantastic job of being one of their primary ball-catching threats. Yeah, he's a tremendous talent. There's no question about it. Watch for 
Watch for Joshua Perry, big Ohio State linebacker, dropping back into coverage a lot, uh, trying to work with him and also safety Tyvis Paul and how they can control Jake Butt is going to be a big part of this contest, especially on third down. In terms of the lots of Ohioans on the Michigan roster factor, Mark, I think that's less of an issue when the game is in Columbus. It becomes more of an issue, I should say, because there's just motivation for the guys to do well at Ohio State. Yeah, quite a few guys from Pickerington on the Michigan <laughs> roster as Columbus, well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you, you look on the other side of the ball, this Ohio State offense that has really been quite woeful the last couple weeks, particularly last week against Michigan State. The only two touchdowns Ohio State had came directly off of turnovers. They had short fields to work with because of those two turnovers. Otherwise, Ohio State very well could have been shut out against Michigan State. JT Barrett's quarterbacking the last couple weeks, I think, has been below par. And I don't know if he's necessarily been taken to task the way Cardell Jones was taken to task at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Clearly, at this point in the year, it's not simply the quarterback. It's not simply the receivers. It's not simply the offensive line. The entire offense just is not working right now. Yeah, I'm with you on that, on the JT Parrott dilemma. He looked like he was really clicking and life was going to be grand for the OSU offense after Rutgers. Did the Buckeyes lose momentum? I think we can shove that aside now. It wasn't about losing the momentum. It was about JT's decision making. And yes, the offensive line play has had some play into that, limiting maybe the time he has to make decisions. But it, a lot of it has to fall on the quarterback. And just like Cardale Jones, I don't think JT Barrett can be immune against uh, criticism, but it's going to be key for him to play well for the Buckeyes to be successful Saturday. After the stunning loss to Michigan State, are you concerned that this Ohio State team has checked out? A little bit, to be quite honest with you. They already have a national championship in their back pocket uh, from last year, and once you get the feel of losing, it, it sadly, it can become easier to lose again. I hate to say that, and I hope that surely doesn't apply for Ohio State, but uh, that's part of the mix in, in athletics. But in the same vein, if the Buckeyes get a chip on their shoulder and they shuck all this aside and it becomes just the Ohio State-Michigan game and nothing else, it's a very talented OSU team can win any time out. Ohio State heads up to Ann Arbor Saturday. Of course, the Buckeyes are not favored to win the game, and there's been six times under Urban Meyer Ohio State's not been favored, including their last three games last season. Ohio State's never lost when they have not been favored under Urban Meyer. Andy, back to you.